imagine one day you guys woke up and your whole life was basically taken away from you. And right now I'm talking to the women. Imagine you were on house arrest and you could no longer work. You could no longer dress the way you wanted. The only colors you would see were black and gray. Your house windows had to be covered up. No one can see you, no one can hear you, no one can speak to you. Um, it's hard to imagine the way that is since how we live now in America. And that's basically the, how the lives were of the women in Afghan before the Taliban. My main points are going to be the life of Afghani women before, during, and after the Taliban. My name is Navina Bawasi, and that's my topic. Um, Afghan women before the Taliban, um, they were very educated and they could have jobs. Mostly 99% attended universities, almost 50% of teachers, 40% were uh, doctors, and at least 10% were in the government. All in, in type of clothing, they were mo mostly women were westernized. They could wear whatever they wanted. They had the choice to wear the veil or not. Um, they were allowed to go out. They were allowed to um, basically socialize like a normal person. They also had rights. In 1964, they were given the right to vote. Before that, they weren't allowed to vote. Um, and they were encouraged to explore their life. Um, now, Afghan women under the Taliban. They had many restrictions. One of the first thing was the loss of jobs. Almost 99% pretty much lost their job and wasn't allowed to work anymore. No more education. 87% were uneducated and 17 were just barely. And the people who were just barely were doing, uh, I guess, like homeschooling underground where people are helping them. Um, forced marriages. This is um, Bibi Aisha and her father had forced her to marry a man that she did not want to marry. And as trying to escape, I guess, and to get a divorce, in December 2010, her husband decided to torture her by cutting off her nose and her ears. And that's how she was before. And once she came to America and she got help from the American troops, they gave her surgery and she was able to fix, I guess, her nose and her ears. Um, house arrest. In 1998, it was mandatory that no woman was allowed to leave. She was basically on house arrest. Um, women are imprisoned in their own homes and denied access to basic health care and education. Food sent is stolen by their, te their leaders, religious monuments of others' faith are destroyed, children are forbidden to fly kites, a child of seven is beaten for wearing sh white shoes. This was George Bush, um, W. Bush, on November 6, 2001, just after um, September 11 when the Taliban became stronger. He was describing basically the lives of women and how they couldn't leave the house. Um, Next is how, this is how they have to basically dress in Afghanistan. And this is either called a burqa or a niqab. And um, the niqab is basically, as you can see, it's a veil that covers your face, covers your body. It comes in black or gray, sometimes really blue, since women aren't allowed to wear bright colors. Um, another quote by the king of Morocco, his name was King Mohammed of Morocco. He said, fate of women in Afghanistan is infamous and intolerable. The burqa that imprisons them is a cloth prison, but above all, a moral prison. This torture imposed on little girls who dare to show their ankles or their polished nails is appalling. It is unacceptable and immoral. <laughs> Punishments. Okay. Punishments. Um, women found secretly homeschooling would basically be um, executed. They would be sent to the whole community and a person is Khan Muhammad and his wife in 2011 of November. He was running, him and his wife ran a school for children underground, and the Taliban found out and basically murdered them in front of everyone. Um, accused of adultery. Women who were accused of adultery would get stoned to death. An example would be Amina. Um, a guy basically accused her of adultery, and later on, he, we found out that he was a liar, and he just did it because he didn't like her or her family. And he said that she had slept with him, and he had proof. So in November 2002, she was killed in front of everyone. Um, no divorce. In October 2008, a father killed his daughter with seven acts, like seven blows to the head with an axe, because she didn't want to be with her husband anymore. And she was literally only 18. Um, if a woman wasn't dressed right, her husband was allowed to basically humiliate her or beat her in front of everybody. And it couldn't, not even her husband, it could be any man. He could degrade her and curse her out and pretty much do what he wanted since that was the law. Um, the lives after the Taliban, in 
Frisky Now in 2012. This, sorry, the American troops, um, they helped them get a new constitution where women and men were equal. And the picture you can see one of the American troops helping a little Afghan girl and giving her a high five trying to give her spirit, I guess. Um, violence against women is now illegal. They're still in fear though because this year almost like 33,000 American troops are going back home and women are scared that the Taliban will gain control. Almost 86% took a poll in fear that they would come back. Thank you. Oh. Oh. oh, no. Oh, Naveen. I messed up. You, you that left something out. I did. Go on, do it now. Can I do it? Okay. Come on. The nerve. Okay, all right, all right, skip. Now this is the end. <laughs> Restart. Okay, so uh, here's a famous quote, but it's anonymous. Um, it says, Afghan society is like a bird with two wings. If one wing is cut off, then society will not function, and that's the bird of peace. Basically, the quote is saying, the fact that Afghan women are getting treated this way, this like society can't work without a man and can't work without a woman. Together is what makes a society. And... Afghani women have suffered through a lot, and hopefully, as the years go by, they'll be able to regain their rights and their freedom and get back what a normal woman should have. Okay, now I'm done. Thank you. All right. All right.